from Searcy, Arkansas. This is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good afternoon, I'm Joey McWilliams and glad to be with you today from the campus of Harding University. And we have a big football game that's going to take place here in just a couple of hours at First Security Field. It's the Harding Bisons taking on the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders. And this could have big implications for the conference race in the Great American Conference. Of course, one of the big things that has been looked at all week long is the weather forecast. Hurricane Gordon, which is not a hurricane anymore, but it has, has been making its way north towards Searcy. It's almost making a beeline towards Searcy. It's felt like, some, felt like something that's a magnetic pull to get up here to the football field. Well, there's no rain here right now. There's been a lot already here in Harding over the course of the week, and we'll see if that uh, is a factor just a little bit later on. And it's my privilege now to get to introduce our first guest for Midwest Sports Saturday today, Billy Morgan, who is the play-by-play -play announcer for the Harding Bisons, longtime play-by-play -play announcer for the Harding Bisons. I don't know if that uh, says that you're just really, really good <laughs> or really old or maybe both. I get along with everybody. How okay, that's that? all yeah. right. Well, yeah. we're about the no, same I, age, I so the, I knew. The age, is, the age is getting to me as well, but... <laughs> Hey, welcome to Searcy and welcome to Harding. It's great to have uh, you here, Joy, uh, for, for the game tonight. Oh, I, I'm really excited to be here. I, I have to tell you, Billy, I've been on campus uh, two or three times in the past. I've had an opportunity to call a soccer championship here, call a couple of football games here. But to be here now, right now, as we are set up in the Gaines Athletic Complex, the facilities here are fantastic. I've seen a few things from the outside. My goodness, getting a look at the inside here is just, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is a great facility that we're setting in right now uh, for the students. Uh, a lot of activities uh, go on in here uh, during, uh, during the year for the students uh, to be able to play basketball and workout center and just a lot of stuff to, uh, to do while they're on campus. And uh, if we were getting rain outside, which we're not right now, <laughs> no, no, it's, not yet. it's pretty warm out there right now. I just walked inside, but there is a chance that we'll get a little rain when we get closer to kickoff. But, uh, and, and the folks couldn't be out on the lawn. They could come in here and, and uh, exactly. enjoy getting ready for the football game. But they are able to enjoy the lawn, and uh, the, the players just came in. That's quite a tradition. Uh, the Brotherhood Walk that uh, is from the dorms, uh, they come over, and uh, just as I came in to see you about 10 minutes ago, uh, the football team, uh, the Bisons, went to the locker room, and uh, now they're getting ready to go out on the field for pregame warm-ups. Now, that is something, too. This, this is not any kind of uh, incorrect grammar here. It is the Bisons. Bisons. On the Harding campus, yes. it is the Bisons. Right. So when you hear that, if you had not heard that before, it is the Harding Bisons. And, and one other thing really quickly as we move on over into football, that, that's something I saw on my app just a moment ago. We got here a little bit earlier in today. Matthew, who is my director and technical director and uh, all of my crew today, as we got here, the forecast was that it would be in the, the mid-80s. It was 90-something a little bit earlier, and this is what the app said just about 10 minutes ago. 89 degrees, feels like 103. Yeah. So the humidity here is, I mean, it's off the charts. Yeah, welcome to Arkansas. <laughs> if, if you don't like the weather, just hang around because it'll change uh, at some point. And, uh, but, you know, honestly, um, we, we haven't gotten as much rain here in Searcy as we thought that we might uh, over the over the right. course of the week, so uh, and uh, the, obviously we have the the, the turf surface uh, that, that drains well. So I don't think we're going to have any any issues with uh, the weather tonight. Even even if we do get some rain, it's football season. These guys are ready to go. <laughs> well, and and that's probably a question for a little bit later on. But you're exactly right. It's football season. So let's talk some football right now. And Harding has the unique offense, okay? We talk about the flex bone, the wishbone, whatever. You all call it out here. It's an offense that is predicated on the running game and lots of misdirection. Talk about what fans will see when they get a chance to see this Harding team play year in and year out. Well, it's, it's a disciplined offense. It has to be uh, for it to uh, be successful. It's a very disciplined offense. The slot backs are such a big part of this offense. And coming back and, and having uh, a, a lot of returners up front uh, on the offensive line, uh, the receivers are a big part of the blocking core as well. And it's, it's blocked first, and uh, <laughs> yes. it's a very unselfish offense. Uh, you, you can't play on in this offense and, and be selfish. It just doesn't work that way. It's a very unselfish offense. We'll see the slot backs who, again, that's a pretty new core with the exception of Tristan Tucker. He rushed for over 100 yards. 
uh, last week along uh, with Cole Chancey, who is the B-back is, uh, in this offense. We, we don't really call it a fullback. We call it the B-back. You'll see Cole Chancey there. You'll see Romar Reeds. And uh, we're excited about those two guys because they're both sophomores. And uh, very, very exciting and uh, to, to watch them. And Preston Payton, I mean, he, he's got to make it go. Uh, he's the quarterback, and uh, he, he has to make the proper reads. And uh, he, his third start as a Bison tonight, and he was outstanding last week. He only threw it three times, but Joey right. connected on all three that, of those and, and passes. That that is a fantastic statistic. I saw that. I want to mention that Billy. That that he's he was 100 yeah, sure. <laughs> percent passing yeah. for 100 percent. Now, with you only you know have three attempts over the course of the evening, but still the the direction there and coming in and. And filling the role of, of uh, you know, uh, those who have gone before mm-hmm. him, stepping mm-hmm. in and, and just uh, making his, well, you said his third start tonight. Third start. That's, that's a big deal because he doesn't get the chance to, you know, air it out it, in recruiting. And that's what I wanted to lead to with the recruiting, not only from the quarterback position, but also the receivers here as well. And you mentioned just exactly what I wanted you to talk about, block first. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to recruit a special type of offensive player, not just from the running back position, but really all the way around for this offense. I mean, they have to know what they're getting into. And it's a culture. And uh, Paul Simmons is perfect for that. He, he loves and talking about the brotherhood of Bison football. And uh, this is a very tight-knit group that wants to win first. And uh, when they take the field tonight, that's that's the goal is to win first and uh, and and not be selfish. This is not a selfish football team. We saw Taylor Thompson, redshirt freshman, last week, one of those young receivers, and we talk about blocking. He, he caught his first touchdown pass last week. So very exciting uh, to see that uh, a week ago. But uh, th- this offense, again, very unselfish. And at, uh, w- when things are clicking, you'll see the slot backs uh, – I, I don't think they get enough credit, really. When Obviously, the offensive line, they never get enough credit. <laughs> but the slot backs, you see a, maybe Tristan Tucker rushed for over 100 yards last week. That was a big deal. But when you see Cole Chancey get a big run, uh, maybe when you see a play-action pass, the slot backs will set that up with, with a key block. And Tucker and Chancey both with 103 yards rushing. So you, you have a pair of – 100 yard gainers right there i mean that's a big deal still not not anything shocking from the harding offense because you expect to see a lot of yards racked up on the ground it's just predicated by this offense i, I want to mention somebody else really quickly and i know that this position doesn't get a lot of attention all the time but because of the play from tristan parsley over the course of the last few years and now he's moved on he was a big part of this harding offense he's the kicker or was the kicker, and there were some games that were won because of sure. his foot. Well, he's moved on. Cameron Scott mm-hmm. comes in and just calmly gets two for two field goals as well, adding to what was, a, again, a 41-17 victory last week over Henderson State. Uh, talk about stepping into those shoes as well. Yeah, and, and I think, obviously, he was uh, very good with his uh, extra points and, and the field goals, but something that probably gets lost in that last last week, and, and he handled the kicking duties um, outstanding last week. But his kickoffs, they were perfect. And you, the new rule with mm-hmm. the fair catch inside the, uh, the 20 uh, uh, this year on the kickoffs, uh, that's that's a new rule that we're going to see a lot it's of. It's tough this. to get used to. Yes. but It's tough was, to get used to watching. He was outstanding with that last week. A lot of high kickoffs. Uh, that that were taken inside the five yard line and and fair catch we we saw that uh, last week so the kicking game was we talked about the offense right after the game last week and the defense how well it played but special teams they they don't get the credit either <laughs> you really a lot of times when things are going well special teams they don't get talked about when things are going bad and and maybe the kicking game is not doing well, that's when you hear uh, the kicking game talked about. But I'm I'm glad that you talked about Cameron Scott (laughs) when something good is going. And he did have an outstanding week last week and did step in some huge shoes uh, with Tristan Parsley who hit some huge field goals for the Bisons in the regular season in the playoffs over the last few years. A name that will be remembered, I'm sure, for a long time to come. Well, before I let you go, Billy, let's, let's talk about this also, of course, Harding with the 41 points put on the board last week at Henderson State. That's the most scored by a Harding Bisons football team in Arkadelphia at Henderson State. The defense played well also. We talk about the offense because it is – and it has a unique feel. You just don't talk about that, that flex bone all the time in college football. But the defense at Harding perennially is good too and does its job. 
defense uh, was outstanding last week and for years. I mean, you can go back to the, the, the 70s, and, and the Bisons took so much pride in, in playing defense. And uh, you're going to see some guys tonight that are very exciting to watch up front. Devin Comer didn't have a lot of stats, if you look at the stats from last week, but he was in the backfield a lot of that football game and, and forcing a lot of pressure um, from, from his end spot. T.J. Winslow had an outstanding game. Bison's uh, – T.J. had three sacks in that game last week. Mm-hmm. And the three turnovers that were forced, Joy, the Bisons were able to take advantage of that and score 21 points off of right. those three turnovers. And the defense uh, scored on its own, also uh, forced a fumble and then a scoop and score by Frank Herbert. So, yeah, they're, they're a fun group to watch. <laughs> okay, well, if it does rain tonight, and again – Still a, a possibility of rain here in Searcy. We're on the campus of Harding University and getting to visit now with Billy Morgan, the play-by-play man for Harding. If it does rain tonight, who does this favor? Who's it favor? Well, I don't know that it really favors either team. I mean, Barrett Renner's going to throw the football around. Okay. We know how good he is. Uh, the Bisons, you know, they want to run the football. And, uh, it, you know, if, if we played on a, on a natural grass surface, I think it has more to – maybe more of an effect, um, you know, quarterbacks. I don't know if I've ever talked to one that really likes to, <laughs> to play in the rain uh, as far as throwing the football, but uh, I really don't expect this to be a, 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 an issue. I, I think more if, it's, if we do see rain, I think it's just who doesn't make mistakes maybe in the kicking game on punts um, and, and with a wet football and just, just see how that goes. All right, Billy Morgan is, is on the call for the Harding Bisons football team. Now, if someone wants to watch you or listen to you tonight, where can they find you? Well, they can stream us on, at streaming.harding.edu uh, on, online or uh, locally in Searcy. Just go to KBHU 95.3 FM. You can, you know, Scott Good and Nathan Looney do such a great job with our yes, website. You can just go to hardingsports.com and all the coverage links there uh, as well for, for our coverage tonight. Well, that, that is true. Now, our audience here with Midwest Sports Saturday, uh, primarily Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you're going to get to see some of that a little bit beyond locally. And you're right, you can find that uh, on the Harding website. And, and uh, shout out to Scott and Nathan because they do a fantastic job. Billy Morgan, thank you for taking time with us today on Midwest Sports Anytime, Saturday. Anytime, Joy. Always great to see you. All right, good call tonight. That'll be Billy Morgan on the call for Harding, and we'll get a chance a little bit later on to hear from, well, his counterpart as I take a look at some scores. And, Billy, you're free. I mean, I thank you for stepping in, man. You, All right, you guys have you, a great You night. have equipment to take you're care gonna, of. You're going to see Dan in a little bit? I'm going to see Dan well, here in just a little be, bit. Be good to Dan, okay? Tell him I said hello. I will do that. <laughs> uh, we'll get a chance to visit with Dan Gregory here in just a moment. Now, here on Midwest Sports Saturday, which is brought to you in part this afternoon by RiverTreeLife.com. RiverTreeLife.com, gifts and tools for the essential oils user. And, by the way, River Tree Life is located locally here in the state of Arkansas, but you can find them online on the web at RiverTreeLife.com. Let's take a look now at some scores from Thursday night. Division II football playing again this Thursday night. And we're going to run down some of the teams that are at the top of our MidwestSports.net rankings. Now, these are not the uh, NCAA regional rankings. These are our regional rankings. And at the top of the Division II list, Fort Hayes State. Fort Hayes State upset against Missouri Western on the road. It was the Griffins of Missouri Western, 23-13. And Jabbar Miles, two interceptions of quarterback Jacob Mazzara. Fort Hayes State quarterback Jacob Mazzara picked off three times on the night. And some of those turnovers key in the victory. Missouri Western with the upset of Fort Hayes State, 23-13. That was the final there out of St. Joseph. Our number two team, according to the MidwestSports.net rankings, Northwest Missouri, 38-17 over Washburn. Northwest Missouri has now won 14 straight games in this series. Redshirt freshman Braden Wright rushed for a game-high 118 yards. He's the quarterback through for two TDs as well. It was number five, Pittsburgh State at Emporia State, and another win for the Gorillas. An eight-game win streak right now. The winningest team in Division II football history, 707 victories all time. That was game number 1,101 in program history. Gorillas with the win. Big win for Central Missouri. Coming back from a loss against Fort Hayes State in week one, well, Central Missouri makes up for that with a 62-10 demolishing 
of Northeastern State. The Mules at home for the first time this season, and they did so without uh, the quarterback, starting quarterback from week one, Brooke Bowles, as he went down against Fort Hayes State with an injury, and it was Kyle Bradley stepping in, got the start on Thursday night. Jeremy Hunt also coming in. Central Missouri with four rushing touchdowns, four passing touchdowns, six for six in the red zone, and the number nine team in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings coming away with a 52-point victory at home. Missouri State, Division One taking on Division Two Lincoln, and Lincoln, the Blue Tigers, got a 10-0 lead early on, but the Bears came back with a 52-24 victory. Missouri State falling to Oklahoma State the week before on a Thursday night comes back with a Thursday afternoon win. That game had been moved up because of rain potentially in the Springfield area. Lincoln trying to go 2-0, still not the case. Blue Tigers team has not started off a season 2-0 since 1972. And perspective, at least from my vantage there, I was one year old in 1972. There we go. One more game from Thursday night. Kearney, Nebraska Kearney, the Lopers now 2-0. First time for them to be 2-0 since 2011. And it was a back-and-forth game. Kearney scored with 1 minute 11 seconds left and actually scored last. So Kearney over Central Oklahoma, 31-27. Let's move back to a little bit of discussion about tonight's contest. Southern Arkansas are here at Harding, and the Mule Riders getting ready to take on the Bisons. That is a 6 o'clock kickoff time. Now, Sports Information Director at Southern Arkansas, Jacob Pumphrey, who, by the way, does a fantastic job as well. We had an opportunity to talk about Scott Good. We'll talk about him a little more. Jacob Pumphrey Got the chance to visit with Coach Bill Keppel about last week's win and tonight's contest. For Midwest Sports Saturday, I'm Jacob Pumphrey, and I'm joined alongside head football coach of Southern Arkansas, Coach Bill Keppel. And, Coach, uh, last week you opened up the season in emphatic fashion, a big 38-0 win over Arkansas Tech at home here at Rip Powell Field at Wilkins Stadium. Uh, I know you guys, that's in the past for you guys. You're looking forward to Saturday. But what were some of the takeaways that you and your staff had for uh, several of your players? Well, I mean, obviously takeaways is, is just that. We, we were able to win the turnover battle in a, in a big way. I, I was really pleased with our football team and the way we came out and executed uh, game one. You're always concerned about, you know, the mental mistakes you may have with a lot of young players, new players on the field. I mean, we got a starting right tackle that's a true freshman. Played his first football, college football game ever. So, uh, so that, that, there's one name right there. Obviously, our quarterback, I thought he executed really well. Uh, Barrett Ritter uh, was, was very solid uh, in the quarterback position. Uh, our receiver core had a really good back. Ron Siggins caught the first pass right off the bat. Uh, those are names that just popped into my mind. I, defensively, I, I thought we were at a whole other level. I mean, uh, we haven't had a, a, a shutout here uh, in Southern Arkansas since 2012. So that, that was very encouraging to start the season out. Coach Adams' first game as a mule rider defensive coordinator. So uh, uh, excited about what he's got going on with our defense. We're a very talented bunch with uh, you know a, a nice experienced group up front. Those seniors we have with, with uh, the outstanding defensive player of the year last year. And you know, Michael Bryson back. And, and, and you throw Malachi Porter in there. And it's, uh, Anthony uh, uh, Washington and uh, Kendrick McKinnon, those four seniors right there. That, that, that's a solid group. With Antonio Washington throwing in with that group there, it's a formidable block. So, uh, uh, very pleased with the way we played on the defensive side of the football. Uh, uh, Demarcus Piggy got a touchdown, uh, which was always got to be big for a defensive guy to get a touchdown. That doesn't happen very often. We had two other turnovers in the game. So, three turnovers to zero, that's a, that's a nice way to start off. And, Coach, this weekend you don't need any any help knowing what the big storylines are entering uh, Saturday in Searcy, Harding. They're a top 10 ranked team in, in several polls. Uh, you remember the matchup here last year, a uh, big win for SAU. Uh, what is your team's mindset, your coaching staff's mindset heading into this game? And you, of course, it's going to be streamed on ESPN3. All the all the talk that's going on surrounding this game, what is what is the team's mindset heading into this one? Well, our mindset's got to be anytime you play hard and you're going into it's going to be a slow test. I mean, they're, they're ground and pound, uh, obviously, with the uh, triple option offense, which presents problems in itself. Uh, but you got to go in with a mindset. It's going to be, I mean, it, it's going to be a close quarter football game. With a, uh, but you got to be a very mentally tough, physical, physical type football team to, to compete with. And uh, you know, the pressure to me is more on them. You know, they're the top team, but we're not. I mean, uh, they're supposed to win. We're not. But uh, you know, our football team has. 
has a whole lot of confidence going in. Uh, the fact that we were able to beat them here last year in, in really convincing style. And uh, so uh, it's a big challenge for us. I mean, uh, we're excited about the challenge. We think we've got a good football team. I'm sure they think they got a good football team. All the ingredients are there for a great football game. I know we're looking forward to it, Coach. Best of luck this weekend in Thursday. Thank you, Thank you Jake. For Midwest Sports Saturday, I'm Jacob Pumphrey. This look on campus is brought to you tonight by RiverTreeLife.com, gifts and tools for the essential oils user. Special thanks to Jacob Humphrey and the entire Southern Arkansas Sports Information staff for bringing us that report. From Magnolia, of course, Bill Keppel, the coach of the Mule Riders, his team in town, and as I, we heard just a little bit earlier, they're here getting ready to uh, get things going here in just a few moments. Kickoff tonight from Harding will be at 6 o'clock. Now, we've gone through some scores from Thursday night in Division Two, talking about a few other games on the docket for tonight. Southwestern Oklahoma 1-0. and We were in Weatherford last week. They're on the road at Washita tonight, also 1-0. It's the Paul Sharp Cup that is up for grabs in this one. Our number seven team in Division Two, Southeastern Oklahoma on the road taking on Oklahoma Baptist. Number eight in Division Two, according to the MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Missouri S&T on the road at Northwood tonight. And number 10, making their way into the MidwestSports.net regional rankings, Chadron State on the road at Perennial Powerhouse, Colorado State Pueblo. Also on the docket for today, Henderson State at Arkansas Tech. Northwestern Oklahoma at Arkansas Monticello. It's Upper Iowa on the road at Concordia St. Paul. Southwest Baptist lost to Houston Baptist last week. It's the second meeting all time at Missouri or excuse me, Mississippi College. And William Jewell from Liberty. William Jewell, the Cardinals didn't get to play last week. They were slated to take on Drake, and that game was pushed back and pushed back and pushed back because of lightning, and eventually it was canceled. So William Jewell at home tonight for the first game of the regular season. Guess what? They get the defending national champions, Texas A&M Commerce. So the Cardinals at home tonight for their season opener. Let's look a little bit at volleyball now as we continue here on Midwest Sports Saturday. And our look through the NAI rankings, our number one team in the Midwest Sports Rankings, Grandview at 7-0 starting the week, number one team in the NAI. The list looks like this, number two, Park, number three, Dort, number four, Columbia, coming in at 5-1, and one. also undefeated coming into the week, Hastings at number five, Midland at number six, McPherson at number seven, Missouri Baptist at number eight, Number nine, Central Methodist, and number 10, Mount Mercy. Now, we talk about Missouri Baptist. They make their way into the MidwestSports.net regional rankings. Now 11-2 on the season. Well, the Spartans started the year at 1-2, but have since rattled off 10 consecutive victories. Coach Chris Nichols had an opportunity to talk about his team's play and how they have done and accomplished this 10-game winning streak. I think really one of the reasons why we've had the success that we've had is, is having so many seniors uh, and the senior leadership that we have. Um, our two outsides, Ana Olivero and, and Mallory Moran, have been huge for us as far as offensively and, and even passing the ball. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, Rachel Luber is playing the libero position. She's been one of the best in the country, uh, both defensively and in serve receive. And all three of those kids are, are seniors for us, and they've been uh, huge for the, the quick start, the good start that we've got off to. Some of the players that have had an impact on that team, as Coach Nichols mentioned, and by the way, this look on campus is brought to you by RiverTreeLife.com, gifts and tools for the essential oils user. You mentioned Mallory Moran, 3.73 kills per set, and Anna Oliveira, 3.24 kills per set, those two leading the way, and both of them with a hitting percentage of at least 240, and that is in the top seven, their kills in the top seven of the American Midwest Conference. Also, Rachel Lubers, he mentioned her, 4.15 digs per set. And one of the things, too, about this Spartans volleyball team is that the play is throughout 12 players on the roster seeing significant time in these matches so far. They'll play again on Tuesday, the 14th. In the meantime, Missouri Baptist, 11-2 and two on the year. Well, we have an opportunity now to bring in someone else here on Midwest Sports Saturday on this Saturday afternoon. You know, we were here on Thursday last week. We're back to an actual Saturday slot here, and we're going to throw it over to Bailey Hedden, who is a senior PR major here at Harding, and she has a couple of guests with her. 
Thanks, Joey. I'm here with two members of one of our boys' social club team, social club here on campus, Sub T16. This is Ian Mohorn and Grant Smith. Now, boys, you've been honored to win the tailgating competition here at Harding for the last two years. So tell me, what goes into the perfect tailgating? Uh, honestly, just a lot of planning, um, a lot of coordination between the guys, getting things together, planning, um, getting the grill set up, planning what we're going to have to eat, and getting people to show up when we show out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, last night I know some guys stayed up, and uh, they smoked some meat for us, and uh, we everybody has a job that sets up for the tailgate, so that really helps everything run smooth. And how many guys do you have in your social club? We have about 94, 95, give or take. So now we're going to do something super fun. We're going to have a trivia contest. So boys, just answer these the best way you can. Who do you think Harding's biggest rival is? Uh, Arkansas Tech. Yep, Arkansas Tech. What football team has Harding played the most? Uh, Anderson State, maybe? I'll do OBU because they're from the same place. Yep, Owachita is the correct answer. Who is Harding's president? You guys better get this one right. Bruce McCarty. Bruce McCarty. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Harding playing today? SAU. Okay, this is like the most important question right here. Who's going to win tonight? Definitely Harding. Yeah, Harding. For sure. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us, boys. Um, I'm Bailey Hedden reporting for Midwest Sports Network. Back to you, Joey. Thank you, Bailey. We appreciate you being here today, and thanks, guys. And, and you know, winning uh, a tailgate party, that is an incredibly cool thing. Tailgating going on right now, we were concerned a little bit about what the weather might be like. And, and by the way, those two young men got, for their efforts, uh, MidwestSports.net T-shirts too. So uh, congratulations to them. But we were a little bit concerned about what the weather would be like. It was, it was supposed to be rain all week long. So thought about being out there with the tailgaters. It smelled fantastic. Absolutely. They have a lot going on right now. Took the ch didn't take the chance, went ahead and stayed in here in the Gaines Athletic Complex. And so it's, it's nice and cool in here right now. I uh, didn't look again at the weather app, but 89 degrees, feels like 103. Kind of happy being inside right now. But we'll be out a little bit later on. And don't forget, we'll have in-game looks at tonight's contest here as we stream this live on Facebook and then a post-game wrap a little bit later on. Tonight's broadcast of Midwest Sports Saturday brought to you in part by RiverTreeLife.com. Looking through volleyball a little bit more as well, we do have our Division Two and Division Three rankings. Division Two, Nebraska Kearney at the top of the list, entering the week undefeated at 8-0. and And by the way, we felt uh, confirmed in our rankings having them in the number one spot. The American Volleyball Coaches Association also has them number one in the country. The rest of the list looks like this in Division Two. Number two, Rockhurst. Number three, Upper Iowa. Number four, Wayne State. Number five, Central Missouri. Number six, Central Oklahoma. A couple of undefeated teams making their way into the rankings this week. Number seven, Washburn. And number eight, Washita. Number nine, Arkansas Fort Smith. And number ten, Truman State. Those are Division two, II, Division three. The rankings look like this at the top of our list. Number one, Wartburg. Number two, Dubuque. Three is Hendricks as we uh, just actually passed through Conway coming into uh, Searcy a little bit earlier. Conway, Arkansas school there, 4-0 and undefeated coming into the week. Number four, Grinnell. Number five, Loris. Number six, Webster. Number seven, Luther. Number eight, Nebraska Wesleyan. Number nine, Washington. And number 10, Buena Vista. And that is a look at our Division two and Division three volleyball rankings for the Midwest sports region. Have a couple more guests coming in just a little bit later on. In the meantime, we want to let you know that we are here on the campus of Harding University. It's Southern Arkansas at Harding tonight. The 55th meeting between these two schools, and you want to talk about a tight contest. Southern Arkansas has the all-time lead in this series, 27, 26, and 1. So Harding trying to even this one up in meeting number 55 at 27, 27, and 1. A couple more games on the docket tonight from Division 2. Wayne State at Southeast Minnesota State. That will be a little bit later on. It's East Central taking on Southern Nazarene. Both of those two teams looking for the first win of the season. And Lindenwood against Missouri Southern. Now we have some scores from Earlier today, actually going on right now, Division One in our Midwest region, 
score from just a little bit earlier, Justin Hansen and Arkansas State FCS team on the road today. Well, they have a tall order uh, that they are looking at as Arkansas State, the Red Wolves at Alabama. It was 13 nothing. Crim- uh, excuse me, yeah, Crimson Tide in the first quarter. Uh, halftime score just a little bit earlier today, Kansas at Central Michigan and the Jayhawks on top in that one. Halftime score, 7-0. Mississippi State final at Kansas State today, 31-10. The 18th ranked Mississippi State Bulldogs uh, taking down the Wildcats today. That was a final. And from Norman today, Oklahoma not taking on Florida Atlantic this week. Instead, a little bit tougher opponent, UCLA. Well, the Bruins did put points on the board but they came a little bit later on. It was Oklahoma 49, UCLA 21, and that is a final. We also have some other Division I contests going on around the Midwest region. Game starting a little bit later on. Arkansas, as we are here in the natural state, well, the Razorbacks on the road tonight at Colorado State. That's a 6.30 p.m. kick time for that contest. Murray State at Central Arkansas a little bit later on. We talked about Drake. Well, Drake gets its first opportunity to take the field it will be in a different time zone as Drake going to Montana to take on the Grizzlies in that one. Just underway, Iowa State and Iowa. That one is going to be, uh, that one is actually at Iowa there as the Cyclones taking on the Hawkeyes. It's Wyoming at Missouri. A little bit later on, Nebraska at Colorado, South Alabama at Oklahoma State, and Tulsa on the road at Texas. Our contest tonight between Southern Arkansas and Harding set to get kicked off at 6 o'clock tonight. So we'll just move on through and look at a few more of our NAIA games. Top 10 as we're waiting for another one of our guests to be here, and I'm sure he'll be here just a little bit later on. Morningside, number one team in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings. On the road taking on NCAA Division II Truman State. And a third quarter score there has the Morningside Mustangs looking to pick up their third win of the season, 28-17. Again, that is a third quarter score from Truman State. Our number two team, Northwestern Iowa at Jamestown tonight. It's Langston, the number three team in the Midwest Sports region, 10-1 last season, advancing to the playoffs after a 10-1 regular season start and just now getting to get their season underway. And a first quarter score there from Langston over Ottawa, Arizona, 14-0. The Lions are on top there. Number four, Baker hosting Grandview. Grandview falling from our rankings from last week as uh, they lost to Evangel. The big game of the week now here, according to our MidwestSports.net rankings, Number six, Evangel, after having defeated two ranked teams in the top 25 of the NAIA, hosting Benedictine tonight. Number six, Evangel, and hosting number five, Benedictine tonight. And that will be the third consecutive home game for the Crusaders. So the big matchup there. And number nine, Kansas Wesleyan, hosting Friends tonight. Number 10, Ottawa, hosting St. Mary tonight. And we are very, very fortunate now to have a special guest on hand tonight. Coach Tim Kirby, just just take the mic. Man, I'm glad to see you, sir. Now, Coach Kirby, the women's basketball coach here at Harding, you stepped over from a different part of campus. Are you out of breath? <laughs> We've had a busy day. <laughs> you had a busy day. Well, uh, you know, and, and the mic just a little bit closer there. Talk to us a little bit more about what you're doing right now because it's not basketball season just yet. Still football season, still volleyball season, still soccer teams that are just all doing well here at Harding but you have recruiting going on yeah this is a pretty big from what I'm hearing a big recruiting day just across the league just a good day for um, bringing kids in to watch a football game tailgate (laughs) do some fun stuff we had a practice today we saved one of our hours um, for this weekend so some of them come in and watch that and uh, got quite a few families here that that uh, wanted to get on campus and and see we, the rain's held, held off so far. <laughs> yes. I think it's getting ready to hit. But it looks a little darker but, now around us. But but still, what a, I mean seriously, what a great day for recruiting for you all. It's an absolutely beautiful campus here, and I, and just a, a, we're excited to get to be here with Midwest Sports Saturday. But that that it has been so nice for you all. Yeah, it's uh, well, our football team's really good too. That makes it <laughs> that makes it exciting. I mean, they're just they're. They're uh, they're fun to watch and and 
we're just expecting a, a really good year out of them so that always makes it fun too but uh, normally our yard out here in front is just completely full of, of tailgating and I think the just the forecast scared a lot of people off. We well, moved I, ours inside to yes. Rhodes Field House today. So, um, but it's a it's a good time before everything gets really busy uh, at some of the kids' schools, and it gives them the ability to to get out and see some things too. So it's pretty exciting. I I saw a good number of folks out there. So if it's a bigger group normally, then that uh, says Harding's the place to be to watch a football game. Yeah, you usually have to fight for a spot out there. We kind of have a a little niche over here where we. We sneak in and, and uh, claim a spot. It's kind of like the old Oklahoma land run. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's usually it's usually pretty crowded and uh, and just an exciting day. So, uh, you you know when you play outside, you have to worry about the weather. That's why I'm a basketball coach. We can <laughs> we can get indoors and play in the air conditioning, and we're kind of soft. I, okay, <laughs> Coach Kirby said that. <clears throat> Let the record show. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, listen, talk to me really quickly about uh, Lady Bison's basketball for just a moment. Of course, the Harding Lady Bison's not too far removed from a Final Four appearance back in 2016-2017, and just what a great run that was. But a perennially a good quality program here, and you've done a great job with these girls. Uh, you know, you've got recruits coming in. I would imagine – this could be a, a pretty, I'm not going to say a perfectly easy sell because, I mean, there's a lot of competition around the area, but still coming to play and be a part of this program, I would think that'd be something that, that girls would want to do. Yeah, we try to, I mean, we try to sell what we do. I mean, obviously with our program and, and uh, the kind of kids we recruit, I think uh, they have a lot more to do with our recruiting than probably me and Coach Jameson do. I mean, they just, they sell our program. We're, we're recruiting good kids that, that um, are coming to get an education and and uh, act right and do all those kind of things that coaches want their kids to do and um, so I think they sell our program pretty well. But if you walk around campus, uh, it's a pretty nice school. Just right. just the aesthetics of it. Um, I mean, we we add new stuff every year. We've got a a great student body. Um, we got all kinds of sports going on all year long. There's just a lot of exciting things. And then uh, the academic part of it, I think, it does a pretty good sell itself. I mean, if you get a degree from Harding, it's it's worth something, and people are getting jobs. And uh, so just the total package, I think, gives us the ability to go get some pretty good kids and, and uh, pretty good recruits. Uh, the, you know, the, the work ethic of – kids usually determine how well you're going to do that season and uh, we've been fortunate enough to get some hard-working girls that just really bust it and, and do a good job with that so uh, just everything combined I think puts us in a pretty good position uh, to to recruit on a high level. Are you all able to at this point in the season get a practice or two in and, and uh, as you do that I mean, it's it, this is the way too early look at the Lady Bisons, but how do you feel about the program right now? Uh, it's good. We've got we have eight new girls, so you're asking me a question. That <laughs> we're a little bit we're a little bit uh, got some question marks on some things as far as just what are the new girls gonna gonna do? Right now, we can go two hours a week in the gym, so we don't get to see a lot of things. But you start working them out on the track and in the weight room and and doing what we're allowed to do right now and we're seeing some really good stuff from some young girls we thought we we thought we were recruited some pretty good freshmen um, to come in and, and we expect our freshmen to play and yes. we had the freshman of the year last year and we've had quite a few of those so uh, we want them to be able to come in and contribute immediately and I think that that's a pretty good selling point for uh, female athletes too I mean they they're not wanting to to spend five years at a place usually i mean guys they'll go red shirt they don't want to go get a job so they're <laughs> they're they're wanting to stay as long as they can and girls are a little more serious about it i think and i'm saying that jokingly but that's funny. um i mean they want to get in here and, and play immediately and and we give I mean, if if a freshman comes in here and they're ready to go I mean, we're not afraid to do that so we're excited about that plus we've got a pretty good group returning i mean we had a we had a good finish to our season last year, got off to a rocky start and um, missed a shot at the buzzer in the conference tournament to, to win that. And 
Um, well, you made a shot so, at the buzzer to win it the previous right, year. So, right. I mean, we've had some pretty good give and take pretty there. Pretty good battles with Arkansas <laughs> Tech on some of that. So, um, but yeah, I, th- I like our returners, and we got a nice young group coming in. Uh, this is Coach Tim Kirby, the head women's basketball coach here at Harding. Now, before I let you go, Coach, and uh, we talk about football right now. And, and by the way, I, I've had an opportunity to watch the Harding women's basketball program with some degree of being up close uh, through the Great American Conference in the last few years. It is a quality program, and, and uh, Coach Kirby, you do a fantastic job, and, and it's an honor to get to sit up here with you right now. Well, As we talk that. about football just a little bit, let me ask you this. I, I know the coaches are going to take care of business out there on the field. This is a big matchup. Going to get to watch it, and, and what do you think is going to happen? Well, talking with the coaches, I know they – they respect SAU. I mean, they've got a nice team. They're they're always fast. They they do some things that that are hard to cover, and and they're going defensively. They're going they're going to play their guts out. So uh, I know talking with the coaches, they're they know it's going to be a, a tough contest. And um, I think you know the Great American Conference has kind of kind of done that with everything. I mean, all, all the sports. You got a lot of people competing and and wanting to win and wanting to be good and uh, something that I've noticed just with women's basketball but other the other sports too. There's some good coaches in this league and they're I mean they're getting their teams ready to play and compete and I think football is is just really I mean how how we've done in the playoffs the last couple of years proves that exactly. a team out of our league can go have a chance and. Um, and I think SAU is probably uh, right up there in the top two or three teams in the in the conference, from what I hear. So, ought to be a pretty pretty good challenge today. Should be a fun one to watch. So, we're looking forward to that kickoff in about an hour and 17, 18 minutes here from First Security Field on the campus of Harding University. Coach Tim Kirby, thank you very much for taking time with us today on Midwest Sports Saturday. I appreciate you having me. Good to see you again. <laughs> it's very nice to see you too. I'm, I'm glad I'm not looking at you across the sideline now. <laughs> I get a chance to get to visit with you and shake your hand. Thank you, Coach. Hey, thank you. We're going to continue talking about uh, Southern Arkansas Harding football. And one of the things that was mentioned uh, by uh, Coach Paul Simmons head coach from Harding in his second season here uh, with the Bisons as the head coach. He's been a part of the program for a lot longer. He talked about his team and the fact that, uh, well, you know, this is a team that had just one penalty last week, that for 15 yards. That's a team that brings back some experience. I tell you what, that was the one thing that really stood out to me, really as opposed to last year, is, you know, you could just feel – um, that we have a bunch of guys that have been in big ball games. There was a, there was a great sense of calm, of composure. Um, you know, we had momentum early, but some things didn't go our way uh, a few times. But there was a very businesslike approach, and I think that's a result of guys that have been in a lot of football games. So, um, yeah, that that definitely stood out. Coach Paul Simmons on the Harding football talk with, of course, Billy Morgan. Now, we saw Billy Morgan just a little bit earlier. Going to go ahead and give credit there to the Harding Sports Information Department. And this look on campus is brought to you by RiverTreeLife.com. Gifts and tools for the essential oils user. Well, this is not Coach Tim Kirby. We've had a little bit of a switch up here right now. We had Billy Morgan a little bit earlier who says hi, by the way. Okay. He wanted me to pass oh, along. I just, I just met him briefly, too, running out of the press box. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm, I'm late to see Joey. I got, <laughs> and he said, I'll talk to you when you get back. So uh, first thing I want to tell you is everything Billy said, just don't believe, don't don't believe, believe it. Okay. It. <laughs> All right. We'll keep that in mind. Uh, glad to have the counterpart tonight on the broadcast. This is Dan Gregory, the play-by-play announcer for Southern Arkansas University, a longtime play-by-play announcer there for the Mule Riders. Uh, you know, just coming into tonight's contest, I, I know that there is a lot on the line in this game already in week two. Now, I, I, I know you can't crown a conference champion just yet, but you have to think that the winner of this game definitely has the inside track. Uh, yeah, you would think so because I mean it. When you when you've got every game of the season being a conference game, I mean you, you come right out of the, you know, right out of the shooting, and you got to be ready to play, and uh, that's going to be the situation here tonight. I think, hopefully, knock on wood, the, both these teams will be, and hopefully the weather won't be a factor. That and, and it could be, and we've talked about that over the course of the evening. I, I look around right now; it is getting a little bit darker. Yeah 
earlier, and I haven't looked at the weather since we've been on the air, but earlier I saw that uh, it said 545, might get some showers. Of course, kickoff is at 6 o'clock tonight. Does rain favor or hurt either one of these teams? And I ask that because I know one team is predominantly a running team, and the other team has a quarterback that can throw it about a mile. Yeah, but the team, but the, and then I got to thinking about that too. That it would definitely be, it would definitely favor Harding, if it rained, if we had a wet field and a wet ball. But you know, with that option, they pitch it so much that uh, you know it could be an issue there too. So it'll be interesting, and, and it's also going to be interesting with Southern Arkansas how their running game produces. Uh, they, they've got about five guys there in the backfield that they used all five of them last week. So mm-hmm. it's really hard. Nobody has really uh, taken a step forward just one game into the season. I wanted to get to the Southern Arkansas defense, but I, let's let's stick with that for just a moment. Barrett Renner uh, highlights this team, and rightfully so. He should. I mean, and I say he's thrown it for a mile. Well, a lot more than a mile, as a matter of fact, over the, over the course of the years. He has 10,000-plus passing yards. Now, in Arkansas football, college football history, I'm talking about all the levels, state of yeah, Arkansas, yeah. all levels, he has the fourth best number coming in, 10,029 yards. He's tossed 98 touchdown passes in his career. And, you know, could you would have to think it's, it's very possible, likely, that he could top that century mark tonight, even though it's a tough Harding defense. I mean, just the way he, that he finds his receivers. Talk about that running back core for just a moment then and, and the fact that, that uh, Coach Keppel was able to get so much mileage on the ground. Yeah, and there's a lot of unknown, a lot of unknowns back there. He's got a lot of guys that he's got redshirt freshmen. He's got, I think, a true freshman back there, and uh, they're and they're all about the same. You look at them on paper, and they're all about the same. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they produce at this point. It's a big question mark. This is a, a team. Boy, I guess, is the guy that's well, got the most experience. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're going to see Purifoy back there. But, I mean, with, with what you were talking about and just mentioning all those, Southern Arkansas, 38 nothing victories over or victory last week over Arkansas Tech. That in and of itself, I think, is a statement to, to shut out the Wonder Boys there, obviously at home in Magnolia. But to shut out Arkansas Tech like that, have to talk about the way this defense played. That, that's just, you got the Washington brothers up front there on the defensive line and Devondrick Lyson and company, and I don't have my I don't have my flip charts here in front of me. So <laughs> Billy brought leave, his. I'm gonna leave some. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I, well, Billy, see, I told you, <laughs> Billy, 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 Billy knows what he's doing. I'm I, I'm just kind of a fly by night guy. But uh, no, I tell you what, though, they, they uh, Devondrick Lyson is the preseason All American, and he is tough coming from that defensive end spot. But those two Washington brothers there, and uh, gosh, the, the, I, I would think uh, actually the first play I think from scrimmage. Last week for Arkansas Tech, Devondrick Lyson was in the backfield as the quarterback was handing it off, <laughs> and and basically he just reached out, grabbed them both, tackled them both, and and so that was a pretty good statement on the first play of the game, and uh, and we hope that we hope they can do that tonight against Harding. I don't know, it's going to be tough. Now see that that's the thing on defense playing Harding because if if you face Harding the opening game of the season, at least you have you know three or four weeks. To, to look at what that offense is going to be like. Now, it's no surprise year in and year out what Harding's going to do on the offensive side of the ball, but still having just a week to prepare for that offense, it's a different look. And Coach Coach Keppel says, at least when I talked to him prior to the game, he says that they've really been working on Harding from day one, that they've been sneaking some of that stuff in there. And, and he also made the point that, of course, last week, they faced kind of a read option thing from Arkansas Tech, and now you've got the first triple option here. Mm-hmm. And so um, how similar is that? I did not, <laughs> not really vary, but we'll see. Arkansas Tech shut out last week. Southern Arkansas firing on all syllable, cylinders because a 38 nothing win, well, you know, it wasn't all the offense. I mean, the offense took care of business yeah. there with Barrett Renner. But also the defense with an interception return for a touchdown, punt return for a touchdown, special teams gets involved. So Southern Arkansas really, it, it did they show a weak point in week one? Not really. I, I don't think so. But and that's another question mark, though. Even though they had uh, the, the the return for a touchdown last week, they've had Jonathan Wise out back there for four consecutive years. So that's been something that it was pretty much written in stone. He's the guy. And now, now I think they used like five or six different return guys last week, even after one runs it back for a touchdown. So, uh, 
Still trying, there, still there trying is, to find think, the ground. I think there are still some question marks. Yeah. All right. Well, and and of course, uh, Coach Keppel mentioned uh, we got to to hear from him a little bit earlier as we looked on campus and and our looks on campus today brought to you by RiverTreeLife.com. That he mentioned, you know, this team is ready. They they're ready to go out. They know that Southern Arkansas is going to bring a good team. He feels like they have a good team. Is or excuse me, the Harding's going to bring a good team. He oh, feels yeah. like they have a good team as well. This is a team that knew and probably had this circled on the calendar week two. It was coming. I always, I've, and I'm not sure that I could get away with it. I couldn't do it live. I'd have to tape delay it. But <laughs> I, I always want to get a microphone in the locker room for Keppel's pregame speech because I tell you what, he came out when we had our uh, our Mule Rider Club kickoff dinner this year, and oh man, he is about as fiery of a speaker as you want to see. And uh, I, I, would, I would just love to see his pregame. <laughs> Maybe we get that chance sometimes. You would have to. Maybe. Yeah, like definitely. I, said, I think it would have to be a tape delay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Probably have to. That That's all right. That Some of the fiery speeches are, are like that. It's football. Yeah, it's that's, football. That's, that's it expected, is. So. Okay, we've, we've, we've talked around Barrett Renner. Now talk to me about Barrett Renner. How does he perform tonight and just build on what he's done in the past? What what does he do tonight? Well, Barrett Renner, and, and I don't know what, what Coach Keppel told you, but I know he got off to a slow start last year. And, he, and once he got into the flow, uh, a couple, three games into the season, he was just unbelievable the rest of the year. So, uh, you know, last week he looked very good against Arkansas Tech. So is is that going to be Bar- the Barrett Renner we see all year? That That's that's a question mark. But, uh, I mean, he comes in definitely a proven quarterback. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Harding, I, you would think that, uh, that that would be number one on defense, stop Barrett Renner. All right, you're going to have the call tonight. Where can people listen to or watch you? I think it's just it's the audio from, from you all, from you tonight. Right. Where do people tune in to, to hear you? We're at, uh, well, magnoliaradio.com. You can also link on uh, muleriderathletics.com. They've got a link to the audio. We've got at magnoliaradio.com. We've got streaming there also. And we've also got a Magnolia Radio app. That, that they can okay. they can tune in on as well. I was yeah, because like you want that. our audio, either me or Billy. You don't want the you know watch the ESPN video, but we want the we want either <laughs> depending on who you're rooting for, either Billy or me. On okay, the, on the audio. Portion. I like that. I really like that. By the way, this game is going to be broadcast tonight on ESPN three. You know, we've yeah. made it all the way through Midwest Sports Saturday and, and haven't dropped the the ESPN name just yet. <laughs> we're we're carrying our own name. That's, that's what it right. is. We're that's carrying right. our that's own right. name here on Midwest Sports Saturday, but that You're is going to be. Name. I'm proud of my name. That's so exactly you, you, you right. Don't worry about their name. They got enough promotion. <laughs> they don't need us. <laughs> <laughs> but the, it is it is getting some national coverage tonight, and I think yeah. that's a testament to to you know not only the growth of the conference and the Great American Conference, but also to what this game really means yeah. tonight. So uh, wrap wrap up our time then, and tell me what you expect to see. Well, actually, if if we've got a. Uh, a, a good game tonight, weather-wise, no effects there. Uh, I, I'm, st- I'm, I'm not sure. I th- it can the I know the S- what the uh, SAU defense can do against uh, a spread offense or a read option offense like we saw last week. But uh, uh, against this triple option, it has given the Muir Riders fits. Of course, SAU used to run this back in the 90s and early 2000s, but uh, that was under a different coaching staff, and uh, we, we have never had a, a lot of luck defending it. Last year we did, but uh, that's going to be that'll be the key to the game. Whether SAU can stop that option attack, I, I, it, it just doesn't happen very much. No, it does not. It does and, not. No. And that's the thing. Well, Southern Arkansas twenty-seven, twenty-six, and one all time against Harding. Now the number I didn't mention a while ago, though, Harding's won eleven in the last twelve. Yeah. So ten in that's a row prior to last to, year. Yeah. Exactly. So that's you know uh, it's a big I, deal. I was almost feeling sorry for Harding. I told Coach Keppel this. I said, <laughs> I said, Coach, you know they had lost I think two in a row, and then they ended up losing again. So they lost three in a row to start the season last yes. year. I said, Coach, I was almost feeling sorry for Harding. Almost. <laughs> and uh, he says, Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. And and by the way, if you don't know, Harding after losing the first three games to start the season last year. Won the next 11, yeah. finished the season 11-4, and four, lost to the eventual national champion, Texas A&M Commerce, no in the national semifinal. No more sympathy. <laughs> no more sympathy for Harding or Billy or anyone else. No, right? No, okay, no. well. We're, we're great. Billy and I are great friends before and after, but <laughs> during the game it's a, just a different story. But we're happy on campus right now. Oh, yeah. Beautiful yeah. campus. I'll tell you what, the, and I, I always tell even the sports information department and everybody else, when you come to Harding, they treat you like royalty. And, uh, you know, it, it, I, I come in here sometimes wanting to hate them, but, but they treat you so well here that uh, 
that I can't do it. Well, they, they definitely do. Well, stay here with me. I'll, I'll sign off and, and just say thank you for watching tonight. Midwest Sports Saturday, wrapping things up here from Harding, from Searcy, Arkansas, on the campus of Harding University. I want to say thanks to Scott Good and Nathan Looney, Sports Information Department here. They do a fantastic yeah, do. job, no doubt about that. Also, thanks to Jacob Humphrey from Southern Arkansas, to Braden, the facilities man here in the Gaines Athletic Complex, and he's taking very good care of us as well indoors, and it is good to be indoors. I don't see rain right now. I'm looking around. It's darker, but in just not taking the chance, I am happy to be indoor right now, and so very, very thankful for that. I want to say a shout-out to RivertreeLife.com, who has helped us uh, bring you tonight's Midwest Sports Saturday, and a big thank you to Matthew McWilliams, who has been our director, our technical director, audio, taking care of all of the work behind the scenes. I'm really, really thankful to get to uh, have him with me for this broadcast today. We will continue. We'll have a couple of spots in-game, and then we'll wrap things up from First Security Field after the contest tonight. Big one kickoff tonight at 6 o'clock. Listen to Billy or listen to Dan or listen to both of them back and forth and see which call you'll, you like. You'll think, you'll think you're listening to two different games. <laughs> you probably <laughs> will. <laughs> so that's kickoff here at about 6 o'clock tonight. Thank you for watching. Follow us at MidwestSports.net, ArkansasSports.net, and all of the family of Emerald Quest sites. And be sure and subscribe. Our YouTube channel, which is where you'll be able to see this a little bit later on, YouTube, search Midwest Sports Net. Thanks again for watching. watching. God bless you. Have a great night. I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching Midwest Sports Saturday.